5 is finally here. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today, I have a very exciting shoe to talk about that I know that you guys are gonna be just as excited about as I was to receive it. And that is the Hoka Mach 5. I'm pretty thankful that I was able to run in this shoe at all this week. I was kind of sick past week. No, it's not COVID, tested multiple times. Um, but on Thursday and Friday, I was able to get a run or two runs in the shoe and we're gonna talk about how that felt today. Now the Mach 5 has some pretty big shoes to fill because a lot of people loved the Mach 4. It was kind of a cult favorite, if you will. And then they came out with the Mach Supersonic that I personally didn't feel was that great and I know a lot of other YouTube shoe reviewers also kind of felt the same. Um, but this is a whole different breed of shoe. This is more kind of like a combination of the things that Hoka learned from the Mach 4 and the Mach Supersonic, or at least that's what they say that it is. So do I feel that it is that? And do I feel that it is a good shoe? We're gonna find out today, but of course, before we do that, we need to watch the running footage and watch me in my very pale legs. It's only the beginning of summer, okay? Give me a break. Uh, watch me run in this shoe, so let's get that over with. today I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Hoka and Running Warehouse however neither company is going to see this before you they can't tell me what to say and all of my opinions are my own. All right, so as always, let's start with the specs. Now for a women's size seven, the Hoka Mach 5 comes in at 6.8 ounces, but for a women's size 10 and a half, which is what I have right here, it comes in at, well, I didn't wait yet. Hang on, let's take a look. I got the scale right here. Let's put it on the scale. 8.07 ounces, so round up, 8.1. It has a five millimeter drop across the board, but the measurements are slightly different for men and women. For women, it's 27 millimeters of stack in the heel and 22 in the forefoot. And for men, it's 29 in the heel and 24 in the forefoot. And for me, the Hoka Mach 5 is true to size. We're gonna start with the upper now. So the upper is enhanced from the Mach 4 and the Mach Supersonic. Oh, if you don't remember what those look like, hang on, I have them right here. Mach 4, Mach Supersonic. So as I said, this material is different from both of those. This is a single layer Creel. I don't really know what Creel is, but it says Creel. Jacquard engineered mesh. What that translates to is that it's a pretty thin, uh, yet somewhat structured upper. It is fairly breathable in that forefoot. If we go to the midfoot, it doesn't have a ton in terms of overlays, but it does have that big Hoka logo. And if we move back to the heel, uh, we've done away with the massive pull tab that the Supersonic had, and we're just kind of going with what the Mach 4 had, which is just a flare outwards here that kind of acts as a pull tab. What I mean by structured is that it doesn't feel like flimsy and floppy. It does kind of feel like it holds your foot in pretty nicely. And I think that has to do with this gusseted tongue that they have. Um, they have changed up the tongue from both the Mach 4 
and uh, the Mach Supersonic. In the Mach 4, it had a little bit more padding, and in the Supersonic, it had a lot more padding, more like a traditional daily trainer. Here, what we have is a thinner tongue. Really, to me, what it looks like is the tongue from like the very first Clifton, the OG Clifton, that's uh, what it's giving. And as they say, it is gusseted, but I do think this gusset really works nicely and gives you a very secure fit across that midfoot. So that could be why the shoe feels a little bit more structured than you would think a shoe without really any overlays would feel. Turning the shoe this way, I do think that the shoe is a little bit narrow uh, in the middle, but it does kind of flare out here in the forefoot and gives you a little bit more room for your toes to kind of breathe without being squished into one another. Um, I don't know if somebody with a wide foot would really feel super at home here, uh, but it's definitely something that if you have a running shoe specialty store nearby you, um, you should go try it out when it is available and see for yourself. One thing I noticed about the upper is that it does have kind of a lot of material volume wise, like going upwards. Um, and I had to really cinch down those laces to get a good feel, which gives it a little bit of extra material here that looks like it's like pinching a bit. Um, but I mean, it's really nothing too terrible. And once I got the laces cinched down nicely, the shoe fit great. I didn't even have to use the last loophole. There's no heel slipping or anything like that. Um, I didn't get any blisters, irritation, or hot spots from the Mach 5. So, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty good upper. I think that the changes that they made are positive ones. All right, moving on down to the midsole. Hoka is using their new ProFly Plus Foam. You have that under your foot through the entire length of the shoe. And then you see that white layer there that's rubberized EVA, which is sort of the outsole, but also acts as the second layer of the midsole. If you recall, the Mach Supersonic also has ProFly Plus foam in it, but I will tell you, these two foams, these two shoes right here, they feel drastically different. The ProFly Plus in the Mach 5 feels much softer much more bouncy. It has to be formulated differently. You cannot tell me that these are exactly the same. They don't even feel exactly the same. I mean, the Mach 5 feels a lot squishier on that ProFly Plus layer there. I mean, it's just, it's completely different and it feels different on foot. I just put these shoes on walking around next to each other and they felt completely different. I mean, this did not really honestly feel soft at all, which is what I talked about in my first run impressions of the Mach Supersonic. It really doesn't feel as soft as the Mach 4, and it certainly doesn't feel as soft as the Mach 5. I do think that the Mach 4 and the Mach 5 do have a pretty similar feel, but still the Mach 5 with this newly formulated ProFly Plus foam feels a lot softer, a lot bouncier, and it's a really pleasant ride. Um, I loved it the first time I took it out. I was like, oh yeah, they, they fixed this, they made it right. I was a little bit nervous after trying the Mach Supersonic about how this new Mach 5 would be, um, but I am pleasantly surprised. I think they've done a great job improving the foam. If you're a person who liked the ride of the Mach 4, then I definitely think you're gonna like the ride of the Mach 5. It feels, it still feels soft, it still feels fun, and I just think it has a little bit more of that response. And I think that maybe, because Hoka said that this is kind of a mesh between the Mach 4 and the Supersonic, I think maybe that little bit of response and bounce is what they carried away from the Mach Supersonic and put into the 5. I have about 8.5 miles in this shoe. I did a three mile run and then a 5.1 mile run in it. And um, I mostly did it at a pretty relaxed pace, which is kind of my MO these days. I haven't really been doing any tempo runs because I just don't wanna. Um, but it handled the relaxed pace very well. And there were times during those runs that I did pick up the pace just to see what that foam could do. And I think that it handled those faster paces pretty nicely. The one kind of complaint that I have about the Mach line, um, or at least the 4 and the Supersonic, and a little bit here, is that it feels a touch flat sometimes, like there's no rocker. And what I love so much about Hoka shoes is that rocker technology. Um, this I think still feels a little bit flatter, but what I will say, and you can even see it in the footage, is that it does curve up a bit in that forefoot, and you do feel that especially when picking up the pace, um, you feel a little bit more of a roll and a push forward sensation. So I do think that they kind of fixed that a little bit in this shoe. 
I don't think that the rubberized EVA layer gets in the way. I don't think it dampens the ride of the shoe. In fact, in this situation, in the Mach 5, I think that they work very nicely together and uh, it just gives you a really good package. This just feels like a more premium shoe in both build and in ride quality. If we turn the shoe over, you'll see the Hoka is using, like we said, the rubberized EVA outsole. I don't think that this is any different from the previous Hoka Mach 4 or the Mach Supersonic. It's holding up pretty well. I mean, it only has eight and a half miles in it, so one would hope it would, uh, but it felt fine. I didn't have any issues with traction, and I have really liked these rubberized EVA outsoles from Hoka in the past, so I am hoping that it holds up just the same. I can't see why it wouldn't. The Hoka Mach 5 will be available in mid-June. I think it's June 15th. Um, so it's coming up. We're at the end of May. That's going to fly by. It's like, what, two weeks? And it's going to be available for $140. I believe that the Mach 4 was like $130 and the Mach Supersonic is $149.95 on runningwarehouse.com. So $140 kind of sits in the middle of those. I do think it's worth the $10 upgrade uh, from the Mach 4 because there are enhancements to this that just make it a lot better in my opinion. Opinion. Um, but in terms of whether you should get the Mach Supersonic or the Mach 5 and pay more money for the Supersonic, there's no question to me. I would absolutely save some money and buy the Mach 5 as soon as it's available. When it does become available on runningwarehouse.com, I will link them in the description of the video so you could click that and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind these will be affiliate links with Running Warehouse. That doesn't mean much for you though, it just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos and talking about all these different mocks. Cause now there's like five, supersonic, four. It's a lot of mocks. I think it might be one of my favorites as of recently, there's another shoe that I'm kind of thinking of and I'm like, ooh, what do I like better? What's gonna be my favorite? Will this or that shoe be my favorite of 2022? That will be interesting. But anyways, uh, I think that this is gonna be a great daily training companion for a lot of people, beginner, elite, whatever you are. I think you're gonna find a nice home here, especially if you are already a mock fan. Um, I'm already a Mach fan, and I'm excited to see what this can do. If I want to do some longer races, will this be one of the shoes that I do my long runs in? Stay tuned. Well, everyone, that concludes my first run impressions of the Hoka Mach 5. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notification bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. I'm kind of feeling this color, but I also love this color. What do you like better? Let me know in the comments. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and do not forget to run like Keller. See you next time. Come here, Rube. Fine, let's go to her then. The audacity of this dog. The audacity of this dog. Hello, I'm talking to you. I called you over, you didn't come. Hello. Oh, that's what you want, huh?